Hey, Harvey, check out my new shirt. Got it from the Coral Academy of Science in Las Vegas. It's very comfortable. It's got my name on the back. And it's got your name on the back, too. Check this out, Harvey. See? See your name there? See it? No, I'm Richard. Actually, that's Sir Richard to you. Nah, your name was on the bottom there along with your superpower. Seeing things that aren't there. What? What's the 71 about? Nah, we're not talking about the 71. My age? I'm not 71 years old. Although I have to admit, Harv, you're kind of close with that guess. No, I'm not 72. Let's get to work. All right, here's our first problem. The right triangle bounded by the x and y axes and the line 3x minus y equals 6 contains two lattice points in its interior. Now, lattice points, those are points whose coordinates are both integers. How many lattice points will be contained in the interior of the triangle bounded by the x and y axes and the line 3x minus y equals 24? Now, you know we're going to start off with the picture, but first we're going to think about where this line is going to be in our picture. We know we're going to care about where it hits the axes, so let's think about where this line is going to hit the axes. Now, when y is 0, x has to be 8. When x is 0, y has to be negative 24. So now I know how to draw this picture. I'm going to put my x-axis way up high because I know that this line is going to hit the y-axis down here somewhere. There's my x-axis. Here's my y-axis. And we know it hits out here somewhere. We're going to call that 8, 0. Way down here somewhere. We're going to call that 0, negative 24. These are the two points where this line hits the axes. So let's go ahead and connect the dots there. Uh, not the straightest line I've ever drawn, but that'll do. Now we have to count the lattice points that are inside. Well, I could just start drawing them all, but what's that? Half the rectangle minus the points on the diagonal. What's he talking about? Ah. All right, let's... Think about this line here. Well, what lattice points does this line go through? The line uh, goes 24 up, goes 8 over, has slope 3. So if we go over 1, we go up 3, we're back on the line. Over 1, that gets x coordinate 1. And up 3 will get us up to y is negative 21. Ah, now I see what we're going to do. We go up from here. Well, we can see that there are going to be 20 lattice points inside the triangle going up from here. We just keep going up from negative 21, negative 20, negative 19, negative 18, all the way up to negative 1, keeping x equal 1. We're going to have 20 lattice points inside the right triangle right along here. And now we can just keep doing this. We go over one more. We go up three more. We get to the point 2 negative 18. And now we have 17 more lattice points inside this right triangle. And we just keep doing this. Go over one, and then we'll count up another stack right there. There'll be three fewer because we're going over one and up three. So after the 17, we'll have 14, then we'll have 11, then we'll have eight, then we'll have five. And then right at the end here, this last point right there, that'll be seven negative three right there and then we'll have two lattice points above that that are inside the triangle now we just have to add all these up we had 20 and then 17 and then 14 then 11 then 8 then 5 then 2 we just add all these up now, we could start adding 20 plus 17 plus 14, but we can pair things up. We got 20 and 2, that gives us 22. 17 and 5, that gives us 22. We've got 14 and 8, that gives us 22. Three 22s is 66. Add on that last 11, and we have 77. That was the long way you're telling me. Rectangle, half the rectangle, take off the points on the line. What? What are you talking about, Harv? Okay, I'll draw the rectangle. Draw a rectangle like this. 
Oh, that's really clever, Harvey. This guy's amazing. Oh, uh, as much as it pains me to say it, this is pretty cool. Look at this whole rectangle here. Look at all the lattice points inside. We got lattice points inside this triangle. We've got lattice points inside this triangle. We got lattice points along the diagonal. Now let's look at all the points that aren't along this diagonal. Half of them are there, half of them are there. So we just take all the lattice points that are inside this rectangle and we take away the ones that are on the diagonal. And we just take half, because half of them are there, half of them are there. Let's try that. First we'll go inside the rectangle. Well down here is where y is negative 24. So you're negative 23, negative 22, all the way up. Now our rows will have 23 in each, and there are going to be seven of them. So inside the whole rectangle, we have seven times 23 lattice points. But then we have to take away the ones that are sitting on the diagonal. And there are seven of them, where x is 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 7. So we're going to take those 7 away. And that tells us how many lattice points are in the whole rectangle, but not along the diagonal. Then we just take half. All right, we just take half, because half of the remaining lattice points are here, and half of them are down there. 7 times 23 minus 7, well, that's the same thing as 7 times 22. And we're going to take half of that. And that's the same as 7 times 11, which is the same as 77. Ah, i got to admit, that was pretty nice, Harvey. No, no, no. Again, that's Sir Richard to you. All right, let's do the next problem. Ah, here we go. Two lines. Two lines with slopes m and n, with m greater than n greater than 0. They intersect at the origin. Now the line y equals x bisects the angle between these two lines. If m plus n is 2 times the square root of 65, what is the value of m minus n? Well, you know we're going to start with a picture. All right. There are the axes. I'm going to start with this line y equals x. That goes right there. And it bisects the angle between the two lines I have slopes m and n. That means one of them is going to be over here, one of them is going to be over here, because again, these slopes are positive, so we know we're not going something like this. All right, so you know one of the lines is going to be like this, and this y equals x, I'm going to go ahead and label that, it bisects the angle. So I know another line over here somewhere. And I know these two angles are the same. So these two are my lines. Ah, I'm not sure how that helps. Well, I know I have to focus on the slopes of these two lines. And I see that these two angles are equal. And y equals x. Well, that bisects the angle between the two axes as well. So these two angles, these two angles are equal. Oh, I see something interesting now. Check this out. Let's say I drop a little altitude out here, like this, and we say that this is A, and this is B, and then we do the same thing over here. Let's say we go up by B, and go over. Well, now look at these two right triangles. Doesn't look it here, because I didn't draw it very well, but these two triangles, we got angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. They're congruent, so this, this has to be A. These two triangles are congruent. Now look at the slope of this. The slope of this, well, the rise there is A, the run there is B. The slope of this is A over B. The slope of that is B over A, up B over A. So M and N, they're reciprocals. I'll write that down right away. N is 1 over M. This is pretty cool, because I put that into this equation. Check this out. You're going to like this hard. We've got m plus 1 over m equals 2 times the square root of 65. And now we're all set. Now we just have some algebra we can pound away. Multiply both sides by m. We'll have a quadratic, and we can solve for m. You like that? Now you don't like that at all. That's the long way. But this is going to work. I can find m now. I can make a quadratic, use the quadratic formula. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, yeah, eventually. 
You see a much faster way? All right, help us out here, Harv. Give me, give me a break here. Give us, give us a, you're not going to tell me. You want me to say what? <laughs> no, 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 Harvey. I'm not, I am not saying that. No, 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 no. No, no, not going to do We're going to do the quadratic formula. We're doing the quadratic formula right now. All right, here we go. Quadratic formula. You ready? All right, you'll at least give me a hint. All right, Harv. Give me the hint. Square. Square. There's no square up here. The equation, equation, equation. Square the equation. All right, we'll try it. We'll square the equation. I'll humor Harv here. We're going to square this equation right there. Let's see, let's see what we get. Square this equation. And we square 2 times the square root of 5. You get 4 times 65. Double 65, you get 130. Double that, you get 260. Not really sure how this is going to help, but square this out. We'll get m squared. Then we'll have 2 times this times that. m times 1 over m. That's just 1. We're multiplying that by 2. We get 2. And then we square 1 over m. We get 1 over m squared. And all that equals 260. Then we just subtract 2 from both sides. And we have m squared plus 1 over m squared equals 258. So, you're not going to help me, are you? No, I'm not going to say it, Harv. I'm not going to say it. No. How does that help? Oh, I see it. I see it. M minus N. We're going to put the 1 over M in for N. And then we're going to square that. Yeah, yeah, I do like it, Harvey. I admit it. I admit it. We're going to take this M minus N, put 1 over M in for N, and we're going to square away. We get m squared, and then we have minus 2 times m times 1 over m gives me 2, plus 1 over m squared. But I already know m squared plus 1 over m squared. It's right up here. That's 258. And then we subtract 2. We get 256. And we never had to use the quadratic formula. So now I know that the square of this is 256. They tell me right up here, m is greater than n. So when I take the square root here, I'm going to take the positive square root of 256. You know that as 16. All right, Harvey. You earned it. Thank you, Sir Harvey. That really hurt.